So our Bible study theme today is the Christian race. The sub theme is the narrow way. We are still continuing on the narrow way. The topic is the way of life. Our text is coming from Jeremiah 38, 1 to 13, then verse 28. I will bring the first reading. Jeremiah 38, 1 to 13. Shephatia, son of Matan, Geldalia, son of Pashu, Jehuka, son of Shalmai, and Pashu, son of Malkaja, heard what Jeremiah was telling all the people when he said, this is what the Lord says. Whoever stays in this city will die by the sword, famine, plague. But whosoever goes over to the Babylonians will leave. They will escape with their lives. They will leave. And this is what the Lord says. This city will certainly be given into the hands of the army of the king of Babylon. Who will capture it? Then the official said to the king, This man should be put to death. He is discouraging the soldiers who are left in this city, as well as all the people, by the things he is saying to them. This man is not seeking the good of these people, but they are ruined. Verse 5. It is in your hands, King Zedekiah answered. The king can do nothing to oppose you. So they took Jeremiah and put him into the system of Akija, the king's son, which was in the courtyard of the guard. They lowered Jeremiah by ropes into the system. It had no water in it, only mud. Jeremiah sank down into the mud. But Ebek, Melek, a Kushat, an official of the royal palace, heard that they had put Jeremiah into system while the king was sitting in Benjamin Gate. Ebek, Melek, went out of the palace and said to him, My lord, the king, these men have acted wickedly in all they have done to Jeremiah the prophet. They have thrown him into the city where he will starve to death when there is no longer any bread in the city. Verse 10. Then the king commanded a bed mouth, the cushion. Take 30 men from here with you and lift Jeremiah. The prophet, the prophet out of the system before he dies. Verse 11, so Abed-Malek took men, Tim, and went to the room under the treasure in the palace. He took some old rags and wore out clothes from there and let them down the ropes to Jeremiah and the system. Abed-Malek the cushion said to Jeremiah, Put these old rocks and worn out clothes under your arm to part the rope. Jeremiah did so, and they pulled him up with the ropes, lifted him out of the system. And Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard. Verse 28. And Jeremiah in the courtyard, and Jeremiah remained in the courtyard of the guard until the day Jerusalem was captured. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we shall continue. The aim of this Bible study is to discuss the end of the narrow way. The end of the narrow way. 
introduction. Chi, can you read the introduction for us? Introduction says, um, no matter how difficult and rough the narrow way may be, the end result is that it leads to eternal life. Hmm. Eternal life means where there is no death, pain, frustration, or lack of good things. One of the righteous people that enjoyed the dividend of the narrow path on earth was Jeremiah, as we saw in Jeremiah 38, 1 to 8. It was exposed, exposed us to how Jeremiah was punished for speaking the truth, but was finally vindicated. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, we shall now continue with the studies. Okay. Describe the persecution of Jeremiah in our Bible text today and God's vindication. Can we, in one way or the other, describe what we learned from the, from the persecution of Jeremiah. Jeremiah happened to be the prophet which was living at the time when uh, northern Israel to Babylon. northern Israel was fallen right. and he was prophesying against the, the nation. He wanted people to surrender so that they do not die. And so but they were willing to fight to the end. So he was bringing this prophecy and the military men that were remaining in Jerusalem was against what he was saying. And so they told the king and the king said, go on and do him anything. What they did was because he was saying the truth, they picked him up and put him in prison. And the prison was a system a dog hole in the ground that is full of mud. This is where he will have died. One would wonder why did God allow that? The same way God allowed his son to go to the cross. Through rugged terrain, we achieve our purpose for calling in life as Christians. And so for Jeremiah to go to Babylon, he had to pass through staying in a system for some time. And so this man who went and reported to the king was not even an Israelite. What did, where did the Bible say he came from? Ethiopia. Is that what your own version said? Yes. Okay, my version said, uh, what did you say? The land of Kush. Or land of Kush, okay. But yeah, yeah, Ethiopian. Ethiopian. Yeah. 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 The land of Kush is Ethiopia. Yeah. Okay. So. It's uh, not official, though. It's not even a. Yeah. Uh, but Melek was not an Israelite, and yet he, listening to the prophet, knew that. God must be speaking through this man. I wanted to save his life. And he approached the king. So such is also our plight. We have to stand to speak the truth, no matter whose ox is God. Many people don't like to hear the truth, but we have to say it the way it is. Because that is what God wants us to do. Praise the Lord. And there are consequences to there are consequences to saying the truth. We saw the consequence that Jeremiah faced. Okay, let's go to number two. Does any person want to say anything before we go to number two? I wanted to say that the consequences uh, Jeremiah faced may not be the consequences we would face in our time. It may not be as big as Jeremiah's own, but there are, there's always consequences to when you want to live out God's way and also say the truth, you know, and set yourself apart to do what God wants you to do. 
So it might not be as big as getting Jeremiah thrown into the system or, you know, serving him and getting him into the mud. It can be small things, you know, that is still, you know, weighing us down compared to what Jeremiah and all the early prophets faced in their own time. So things, things will come. And no matter how big or small they are, when we want to live for God. Okay, I would I'll rather put it this way. That the consequences of truth varies. It doesn't have to do with times. Uh, some people in these times are killed because they said the truth. But Jeremiah was not killed. He, was, he faced near-death experience. But up to today, people are killed. People are disdained. People are ridiculed because of truth. So it depends on how God wants the test to come our way. No, yeah, I'm just bringing it to bringing it to us, like us here and around us, you know, in our vicinity, in our area. I, I know that there are people who are still get killed or put in prison, like in here in America, in the northern states, part of Nigeria and Africa. Yeah. I'm just bringing it home to us, you know. Okay. Even in our homes, or you know. Okay. Okay. Let's go to number two. If nobody wants to say the other thing, okay. from experience. Explain how truth is being persecuted in our generation, especially in the Church of Christ. How is truth being persecuted in the Church of Christ? Remember, this is Bible study. We're supposed to be discussing. Are we supposed to read the, the passages? No, I want us to discuss it before we read the past passage. What did you say, man? No, I was just going over the question. You know. So the truth can be, um, we can be persecuted for standing in the side of the truth. We can be looked down upon. People can use us to gossip around it stands on the side of the truth. So many things can come when we stand on the truth. Even the the way the Lord leads us to share the gospel, somebody can uh, stand on it and uh, begin to speak things that are not supposed to be discussed. So the truth, let us never give in to crowd because we are afraid of what they will say. Okay, can somebody, she read, uh, oh, um, Sister Beatrice, read John 6, 33. She read Romans 9, 27 to 28. John 16, that's 16. John 16, 33. These things have I spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Okay, how does what she read apply to speaking the need to speak the truth? And what comes with when we speak the truth? Tribulations can come, suffering, discomfort can come. But God wants us to be careful about it. Sanchez is speaking. I don't need to. Anybody shipping, they will be. I'm not collecting talk. God. 
I've, I've uh, muted him. Continue what you are saying. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> that we will have tribulations, you know, even in speaking the truth, that might, you know, take away our, kind of wants to take away our peace by bringing in tribulation, bringing in suffering, bringing in discomfort. Mm -hmm. But God is still saying, you know, God wants us to keep looking up to him and be okay. careful, even though it is hard, but keep doing what we're doing and keep being careful about all we're doing for God because he says we will overcome. We will overcome because he has overcome the world. So we too will overcome, you know, finally will overcome. Amen. 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 So do you want to say anything or do you want to go on and read your own? Yeah, let me read my own. She's reading from Romans chapter 9, 27 to 28. Romans okay. chapter 9, 27 to 28. Okay. It says, Isaiah also cried concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. I can read it from the other version. Okay. So Israel, Isaiah cries out concerning Israel. He says, the number of people from Israel may be like the sand of the sea, but only a few of them will be saved. The Lord will carry out his sentence. He will be quick to carry it out on earth once and for all. How does that relate to speaking the truth? So the way it relates is that because of fear, many people will not speak the truth. You know, the Bible says that many are called but few are chosen. Those that are chosen are people who are bold, that are ready to run into difficulties, difficult situations. They are ready to face persecution. They will see persecution coming, but they will open their hand and welcome it and stand by the truth. And that's what, what is being referred there, that remnants will be saved. Yeah. Those who are insisting on identifying with Jesus 24-7. They stand for the truth. They are persecuted. They are not welcomed in certain places because of their faith with Christ. These are the people that are regarded as remnants will be saved. He says, as I was saying, although Israel are so many like sand, but at the end of the day, those who trust in the Lord, those who are giving remnant will be saved. Okay, praise the Lord. Okay. Why is it difficult for some leaders to walk in the path of the truth? Why is it difficult for some leaders to walk in the path of the truth? I'm going to read from Jeremiah 38, 17 to 19. Jeremiah 38, 17 to 19. Okay. I'll read from Jeremiah 38, 17 to 19. What we are looking for there is, why is it difficult for some leaders to walk in the path of the truth in life? Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, Zedekiah is the king of Israel at this time. So Jeremiah, Jeremiah is a prophet. Then Jeremiah said to Zedekiah, this is what the Lord God Almighty, the God of Israel says. If you surrender, to the officers of the king of Babylon. Your life will be spared, and the city will not be burned down. You and your family will live. 
But if you will not surrender to the officers of the king of Babylon, this city will be given into the hands of Babylonians, and they will burn it down. You yourself will not escape from them. Verse 19. The king Zedekiah said to Jeremiah, I am afraid of the Jews who have gone over to the Babylonians, for the Babylonians may hand me over to them, and they will mistreat me. Okay. So remember the, the, the circumstance that brought this peace. The, because of sin of the Jews, or, you know, Israel was divided into two, northern and southern kingdom. So I think the northern kingdom were under uh, the, the progenitors of David. So at this point, it was one of the David's great grandson, Zedekiah, that was the king. And the sin has come to the point where God has led Babylonians to come and remove Israel and uh, Benjamin and Judah. And so the prophet that was living at that time was called Jeremiah. Jeremiah was telling the king, look, this country, this Jerusalem will be captured. So when they come, surrender to them. If you don't surrender, you'll be killed. If you surrender, this town will not be burned down. But look at reason the Jeremiah gave. So the question is, why is it difficult for some leaders to walk in the path of truth and life from what we read so far? Thank you. Sometimes a fear of isolation, you know, people may isolate you, you may lose, um, I mean, people talk about leaders in the church, you may lose your crowd, you may lose, you know, financial support, isolation. And then on the other, uh, you know, in the, um, for other leaders, it's still isolation too, and you may lose their popularity, and you wouldn't have crowd, you wouldn't have uh, uh, support or backup. So, People don't want to say the truth so that they don't want to lose uh, their popularity or lose their um, their leadership or you know things like that. So they choose to remain silent, not say anything, or uh, choose to side with what is not right or what is not good. You know, just you know, just fear of isolation and losing popularity and the rest of it. That's true. Other contribution. Beatrice, if you are speaking, you are mute. <laughs> so, I for me just want to compromise, just giving as Sister Chizoba said, just be on the side of the the the, the group or side groups and just you know be on that swing, you know, so that they can be on one side or on a particular side it can be for different okay. that are not pleasing to god okay so all you are saying all your contributions are right and in addition to that we can see from contest god is speaking through jeremiah but the king is fearing the people instead of fearing God. How true is it today that majority of people who call themselves Christians are inclined to what the crowd is saying than what the Bible is saying? In our dressing, in our commitment to the things of God, in our in friends we put, we make, and things like that. This is a man of God, which all the nation know that he speaks from God. And uh, the fear the king was afraid of what will happen to 
pain when he touched the baby. Even when the prophet was convincing him that he would be okay, he was still afraid. So the import from this story is who should we fear? Should we fear the crowd or should we stick with God no matter the circumstance? Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Does anybody, Hallelujah. Yeah. Um, does anybody have anything to say to this mm -hmm. regard? Okay, let's move on. That's how we read in there. Discuss this in line with Jesus' warning. Discuss this in line with Jesus' warning. Matthew 10, 28. By the way, can you read Matthew 10, 28 for us? Do you have your Bible? Yes, I do. Okay, please read Matthew 10, 28. Okay. Matthew 10. My room is a little bit dark. Let me turn on my light. Sure. Okay, Matthew 10, 28. Um, do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Amen. That uh, kind of emphasizes what I was saying about the king being afraid of uh, not being not being afraid of the word of God that is coming from his prophet. But listening to the feeling and emotion of his flesh. At times we all face with that. Let's be careful and uh, submit to the inkling that is coming from the Holy Spirit. That small, still voice. Let's listen to it, submit to it, and do what he wants us to do. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Does anybody want to make any comment? Oh, Marilyn, do you want to make any comment based on what you read? Um, I, I think it's self-explanatory. Okay. okay. So let's go to number four. The way may be narrow and distressful. Discuss the end in line with Jeremiah at 9, 11 to 14, and Revelation 7, 13 to 14. So let me read the question again. The way may be narrow and distressful. Discuss the end in line with Jeremiah 39, 11 to 14, and Revelation 7, 13 to 17. Martina, can you read? She's at work. Okay, she's at work. Okay. Okay. Um, she reads Jeremiah 39, 11 to 14. And uh, Marilyn, I'm going to trouble you once more. Read Revelation 7, 13 to 17. Okay. 11 to 14? Yeah. Um, Jeremiah 39, 11 to 14. It says, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave Nebuzaradan, captain of the king's bodyguard, special orders regarding Jeremiah. Look out for him. Make sure nothing bad happens to him. Give him anything he wants. So Nebuzaradan, chief of the king's bodyguard, along with Nebuchadnezzar, the Rastari, Nagalashferaza, 
the Rabbag and all the chief officers of the king of Babylon sent for Jeremiah, taking him from the courtyard of the royal guards and putting him under the care of Gedaliah, son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, to be taken home. And so he was able to live with the people. So he's been released now. Okay. Okay, from what we read, um, what is the word? Discuss the end. And uh, if you can, go back a little from the beginning of what Jeremiah faced as per execution. Okay, maybe I'm the person to do that. Okay, from what we read thus far, we when we started, we saw that the armies of uh, Babylon were surrounding Jerusalem. And Jeremiah spoke the truth and said, look, God wants Jerusalem to surrender to Babylon. He was talking to Zedekiah, the king. But majority of the soldiers did not like what Jeremiah was saying. And they said that he was kind of, uh, the words he's speaking is kind of dissuading soldiers that are left, yes. making them afraid. And so because of that, they were mad with the prophet and picked him up and went and dumped him in a system. The system is an, a ground that a hole that is dug where there is water. But in this very system, it was full of mud. So he was released down to the sixty. And chances are that they wanted him to remain there and die. But what we read told us that a foreigner saw what they did and reported to the king. And king, through that foreigner, released Jeremiah. And kept him. So from what we read here, we can see that Jeremiah was eventually, let me put it this way, Jerusalem was eventually captured by Babylonians, according to the prophecy of Jeremiah. And Jeremiah was also arrested and taken to Babylon. And we saw that when he arrived in Babylon, he was treated like a royal. He was mm -hmm. kept in the king's courtyard. And not only that, maybe because in the courtyard, he will not see people he knew. Nebuchadnezzar gave an instruction and said to his next in command, and said, get this man, give him whatever he wants, provide for him, make sure nothing bad happens to him. And what he did was to send him to fellow Jews, where he was taken care of and comforted. So we can see that during our introduction, we said, no matter how difficult and rough the narrow way may be, the end result is that it leads to eternal life. Eternal life means where there is no death, pain, frustration, or lack of good things. One of the righteous people that enjoyed the dividend of narrow path on earth was Jeremiah. And that was the story we just told. So I don't know what we are passing through. Let's remember that if we remain faithful, if we remain loyal to the word of God, God has a big plan for us. And one thing I've noticed is that there is always turbulence before you arrive at the path where you will enjoy. This world is like all of us are in a journey, passing through, passing through the stage. Things that are challenging will surely come our way. Things that will make us say we are no longer, we we'll better relax with the world. It's going to come our way. Things that will introduce compromise to us will come. Those challenges will come. But if we persevere to the end, 
we just had a picture of what eternity is by Jeremiah coming from the system to the mm -hmm. king's palace in Babylon. That's a picture. And uh, when we read the Bible with understanding, this picture is all over the Bible. The same picture awaited Christ who went to the cross, passed through different tough terrain, going to the cross, died in the cross. And what happened? God lifted him, gave him a name that is above all names. Let's, mm -hmm. let's be strong. Let's not allow the events of our time to shake us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Who is reading the next one? Does any person have anything to add to what I said? I, I just want to say, you know, you said it's always good to hang on to God, but, you know, sometimes as humans, that wait period could be very frustrating. You know, that's one thing that puzzles me, and I'm just saying it out. You know, that, that period, you know, sometimes, like in my own situation, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm just floating. I'm, I, I have no choice but to hang, you know, hold on to God. But um, sometimes just that wait, that period of, you know, you're just, you're just so confused. You know, I, I just want to say, to be honest, it's really hard, you know, but we have no choice, you know, God is still my pillar and everything, but it's it's really hard. Sometimes mm -hmm. it can be very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. So I want to introduce Marilyn to all of us. Marilyn is uh, calling in from California. Um, Marilyn lost her husband about a few months. How many months ago? A month? On April, on April 27. April 27. Uh, the, mm -hmm. name of, the name of the husband is uh, Obi. Obi happened to be uh, a close relations relation to me in a way that my parents were, were uh, grew with the father of Obi. I knew Obi when he was four years old, way back in 1971. So Obi recently died. And, uh, Mary Lynn is the wife, married with two children. Um, so he, she is, remember her in your prayer, please. She's passing through a lot. Mary Lynn, what you said is right. But in all, the essence of the scripture is to help us to see what other soldiers or other generals pass through. We are ambassadors yeah. of Christ in this earth. And so God is watching to, God knew you will be able to pass through it. And he allowed it to happen. And he's watching you and bringing mm -hmm. encouragement means you are weak and uh, mm -hmm. to not to relent to be strong to be not to be a civilian but to be a soldier for Christ Amen Amen, Amen. Amen. Okay. So Marilyn read your own for us So uh, you said um, Revelation to, 7 13 to 14 so 13, to 17, 13 to 17 Oh, 7 verse 13 to 17. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are, the, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will spread his tent over them. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water and God will wipe away every tear 
from their eyes. Amen. Amen. Right. So from uh, what our sister read, we are, we are seeing a word of encouragement. And the first thing we noticed from what she read is that um says the question from John. So this discussion was going on between Apostle John from the island of Patmos, where he got revelation to write this book. And then he said, then one of the elders asked me, these in white robes, who are they? And where did they come from? So this is a heavenly person asking, 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 asking uh, John, who are these? And yet he was supposed to reveal. So at times God puts questions to us and uh, that question brings our attention to the discourse. And John rightly answered, I answered, sir, you know. And he said, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. I want to tell us that our journey in this world is planned to be a tribulation. So that in heaven, there will be no mistake as to who is making heaven. Heaven is such a wonderful place God has prepared that he wants those who have actually washed their robes and made them white in nothing else but the blood of Jesus to be there. There will be no mistake in heaven. Only those who make heaven are those who have intentionally choose to follow the way of Christ and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And the elder continued to explain. This is one of the 24 elders. You know, in heaven, when you get to the throne of God, you see the 24 elders, you see the four living creatures. These are kind of uh, cabinet, God's cabinet. And so God delegated one of the elders to talk with Apostle John. And he expressed how heaven is. You know, St. Paul said, I have not seen or ear heard what God has prepared for those who do what, who love him. And we have that picture here. He says, they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he who sits on the throne will shelter them with his presence. Never again will they hunger. Never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat down on them, nor the scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear yes. from their eyes. We may have mm -hmm. tears while we are living in this earth, but mm -hmm. we look forward to a time when we live our life in eternity that has no end, in a, in a space that yeah. is eternal. And, uh, oh my God. And that is why God is testing to make sure the right people are coming with mm -hmm. tribulations. And the elders said they came from tribulation. So if you are living your life without tribulation, that means there is a certain compromise you are walking in. So the only people that will make heaven are people who will have story of trials, of temptations, of falling and rising, falling and standing, and continuing the race. So cheer up and be strong soldier in whatever comes your way. Only those who pass through tribulation will pass into eternal bliss. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, Sister Beatrice, I want you to read conclusion, food for thoughts, memory verse. And she, after that, you pray us out. It's conclusion. To everything that has a beginning, 
there shall surely be an end. So is the narrow way. It may be occupied with unpleasant conditions. However, it leads to eternal bliss with Christ in his kingdom. Food for thought. Only the narrow road can prune bitterness that gives blissful end. Memory verse, Matthew 7, 14. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. Wow. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can you speak up a little? Your voice is far. Our Father in heaven, we just want to bless your name again. And for this evening, you have gathered us at your feet to bless us. We thank you because we know that we have the presence of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Mm. Thank you for your word that has gone forth. Mm. But I just we were discussing in our prayer meeting about how every sifting, every trial, everything you go through, that God knows about it. It's by a divine command and permission of God. And mm -hmm. when we know that God is in it, then we are encouraged. We are confident that he will see us through. That's why the fact that the devil may weigh in to torture us, to press us, to oppress us, to cause us depression, just like he did with Job. The devil had to ask for permission from God to even lay a hand on Job. But God was saying it and so Job to it all. That's why the fact of what the friends and the wife did, God stood with Job. So God, we're asking you to stand with us in all the trials that we face, in all the difficult times and situations that come across our way, to know that you are there with us. That all you're asking is to, all you're doing is to prune us so that we pass from stage to stage and if we remain faithful, you have a plan for us unto eternity. So Father, strengthen us and encourage us by your word, through your word, Help us to stay focused and trust in you and lean on you because we know we cannot do it without you. Father Lord, not to line up with majority or the crowd, but to speak out the truth in your fear, knowing that we get a reward from heaven. But the time may come when we look like we are alone. People like to look us because we are standing in the truth, because we are changing position, because we are turning away from the path that we are familiar to turning to the path of God. But in such times, help us to know that you are with us and you will never leave us or forsake us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you make us your representatives wherever we find ourselves, ourselves, whether at work, in the community, at home, in the church, everywhere. We stand for the truth because you are the author of truth. Father, we thank you for our sister who joined us. Father, Lord, you alone know what she is passing through. Father, we do not know. We may say, oh, sorry, I can feel your pain. No, we cannot feel her pain unless we have been in her situation. But God, you know the end from the beginning. A song says, I don't know what you are doing, but Lord, but I know what you have done. So we have testimonies of what you have done for us in the past, knowing that you do more than that. Father, you do more than it for Marilyn and her children and the rest Jesus. of the family members who are grieving and mourning at this time. Father, be her Lord, be her husband, be everything and all things to her. May she mm -hmm. find solace in you and trust in you. So that Lord, nothing will make her to waver. But her mm -hmm. times will come when she will think like she's alone. But I show up for her, strong and mighty in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Father, this night, Lord, mm -hmm. even as we all go to bed or go to our various assignments, those who are at work, be with us. Do not leave us. And I know you would never forsake us. You have not forsaken us in the past. We give you all the glory, all the honor. Thank you for the instrument you used to bless us. Thank you for all of us that contributed. Father, mm -hmm. I am sharpness. I am sharpen us the more every day. That we'll come back here next week to still seek your face because we have no other place to go. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus. forever in our life. In Jesus' wonderful name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Uh, Marilyn, try and give my wife a call. She called you. 
and left a message. Yeah, she's, she, yeah, we, we've been texting back and forth. Okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Actually, the was, yeah, I was late and then we rushed into the prayer group and then now to Bible study. So that's why we didn't. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Marilyn. Okay. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Yeah, good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.